What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and welcome to the Road to Horsepower. The Road to Horsepower is a series we started a few months ago where we take a Harbor Freight 212cc Predator engine and we start upgrading it step by step and we dyno it after every step. This will show us a real world horsepower that we can expect out of our engine. So far we've added a billet rod, a billet flywheel, a 265 cam, a 24 millimeter Makuni carburetor, and we added some 26 pound valve springs when we removed the governor. We're making some pretty good improvements over the normal six and a half horse claims that Harbor Freight says with these performance mods and we want to keep it going by adding even more in this video. So today we're going to be adding some 1.2 billet ratio rockers. These will give us even more lift out of our 265 cam and to make sure we have enough clearance for those rockers we're going to be going with a billet valve cover. The factory valve cover had some baffling inside and we want to make sure we don't hit the valve cover with the new rockers so we're going to be putting that billet one on and it just makes the engine look that much nicer. We're also going to be adding some chromoly push rods for longevity because we're going to be beating on this engine a ton over the next few months so we want to make sure it's going to last and chromoly push rods is going to ensure that we don't bend a push rod when we're making more horsepower. We've been reading your comments and we noticed some people was complaining about our air filter that we chose to run on our TM24 carburetor. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this set of performance parts with this smaller k &N style filter and then we're going to upgrade to the bigger k &N style filter from Go Power Sports. They sell an adapter shown on screen that you can step up to the larger air filters like that you would run on the aftermarket carb kit for the stock carb. So without further ado, we're gonna install these rockers and see how much more horsepower we can get by adding some more lift to our cam. First, we need to remove the valve cover and take out the stock rockers and push rods. With the valve lash set to zero, I check for any coil bind. Our springs have plenty of clearance, so now we can set our valve lash to three thousandths of an inch. So I wanted to really quickly go over uh, ratio rockers and the numbers that you see when looking at cams. So basically we are running 1.2 ratio rockers and our cam is a 265 lift cam. Now that is how much it's actually pushing the follower or the tappet and that's the part that the cam lobe actually pushes. The cam lobe pushes the tappet, the tappet pushes up the push rod and the push rod pushes the rocker, the rocker opens the valve. So that's your main valve train components. So basically our cam lift is 265, 0.265. Our ratio rockers, since they're 1.2s, we can times 265 by 1.2, and that is giving us 318. So it's like we have a 318 lift cam uh, in our engine. So basically ratio rockers is a cheap and easy, quick way to be able to get more lift out of your cam. Now normally when a cam has more lift, it has more duration, and duration is the amount of time it takes to open the valve to it's closed again. So the moment it cracks open to the moment it's shut. One thing is, is if you have a good ported head, the more duration you have, the more you're gonna be able to take advantage of. Uh, since we're having a stock ported head, our head's only gonna flow so much. It's very poorly casted from the factory, so it's gonna be restricted. So it doesn't matter if we had a ton of lift or duration, we're only gonna be able to flow what this head's able to flow because of the port job. Now in our next video, we'll be porting up this head to see how much more power we can squeeze out of this engine. One thing with porting is we don't wanna hog out the, the ports because our valve is only gonna flow as much as it can flow. Let's say this has a 27 millimeter valve in it, we don't want a 40 millimeter port going to that because we'll never utilize all that flow. And what we would end up with is a lazy engine. 
it wouldn't be good with throttle response it would just be lazy all over the place and it could make good power but it's not going to be a real good drivable engine so back to the cam we have 0.318 amount of lift now and that's dramatically improved because of those ratio rockers but one thing you want to know about ratio rockers is the more ratio you have the harder on the valve train it's going to be and especially the cam the cam's going to have to work harder to push all that to open that valve so you do want a good quality cam and you want to run really good oil in it and that's why we run amzul dominator oil because it's going to help from stuff like cam wear with these uh, ratio rockers and the more aggressive the lift is on the cam the more uh, strenuous it's going to be on everything one thing you want to check when doing ratio rockers we're starting off with uh, a mild cam it's nothing like super aggressive if we had a 308 cam we would want to check a lot of these things but since we're starting out with a 265 cam and we only have 1.2 ratio rockers uh, we didn't have to worry about any of this but you want to check for coil bind and that's basically where the valve spring is coil on coil it's metal on metal touching each other and you want at least 50 thousandths of a gap between those at maximum lift uh, especially on the exhaust side and the reason of course you don't want coil bind is because if metal is on metal there's nowhere else to push that valve so something's going to break it's either going to break your rocker or it's going to bend the push rod or it can start wearing down the lobe of your cam another thing you're going to want to check if you had a more aggressive cam again we don't have to worry about this because we're not it's so aggressive right now is valve to piston clearance a hemi uh, has more problem with valve to piston clearance because the valves are on an angle and the way they come down towards the piston you have more worries with valve to piston clearance so we do have a video coming out on the channel that shows how to check valve to piston clearance and it's really good video to watch if you don't know anything about these engines uh, we're trying to teach everything we've learned from trial and error and just reading and researching and um, you know we're no professional engine builders but we love doing this hobby and we love sharing with you guys what we've learned so that's the few things there's a duration of the cam like i said that's how long the valve is actually staying open there's lift and that's how much it's pushing the valve open basically pushing the tappet to do the valve train movement and then there's also overlap and overlap is basically how much time is the intake valve open at the same time as the exhaust again a good port job would help uh, to benefit that and what why you want the uh, overlap is it can actually draw in the next charge of fuel and air by leaving the exhaust open just a little bit to help that vacuum effect happen in the head uh, just wanted to note a few things before we throw this on the dyno so next video we'll be porting up the head and then we'll go on from there but there's a lot of complementing uh, parts you can do to a build you really need to look at what you're going to want to achieve out of your engine before you ever start building it and not just buying whatever cam we tell you that we like it all depends on what you want the end goal with your engine and every cam manufacturer normally will put a brief description of what the cam is designed to do whether it's low end to mid range or mid range to high end so if you want a drag bike you might want a mid range to high end style cam you're going to want to do complementary uh, additions to complement that cam you know and so everything works with each other to improve each other there's always a weak point of an engine and that's what is going to hold you back on power and when you upgrade it you're going to find the next uh, bottleneck of your engine so let's get this on the dyno and let's test some horsepower
All right, so with these ratio rockers, overall we made a half a horsepower more. Now, like I said in this video, we're gonna make a lot more when we poured up our head. And I had this stock head sitting on the shelf and I went ahead and did a full port job on it and polished the exhaust side, left the intake side a little bit rough. We're also gonna be installing some stainless valves in the next video. Um, so that should help out flow a ton, which I think is the biggest holdback to this engine right now. We have a really good cam, we have the ratio rockers. Now, if we just get the ports to flow better, we're gonna make even more power. You should probably go ahead and port your head up when you do your cam to get the most power. And you're really just taking out the rough edges. And a lot of times the valve seats will have a big lip that hangs over the port. And sometimes that's as big as 10 thousandths of an inch. So if you blend all that in, cut down those edges and make it just look at how the head's flowing and try to improve that flow. And don't really hog out your ports like we were saying. Don't make them massive so you can't even flow that much, but try to port match your intake, port match your exhaust, and that's gonna help this overall build. So half a horsepower more, uh, for the ratio rockers now we are going to be trying some cams out later once we get the head ported up and do some other things we got a whole lineup of cams we're going to put to the test so stay tuned for that and like i said guys the next video we'll be testing out the head and porting it up doing some stainless valves and seeing how much power we can get out of that i'm really hopeful that we can really squeeze out some good power with a ported head so make sure to check out the links in the video description where you can find all these products uh, everything we have used and will use is linked down there and they do help us continue this series so we hope you will support us by clicking on those links thank you guys so much for watching make sure to comment down below what you want to see any um any changes you want made to this series we love to hear your comments so and we're always listening so thank you guys we love you and god bless